In this video, we're gonna cover how to use the iPolar camera to polar align your Lost Mandy mount. So the iPolar camera is a relative newcomer. It's similar to the Pole Master. So as we go through this tutorial, if you're using Pole Master, it's very similar in setup. Uh, obviously the software is gonna work a little bit differently, but they both work on the same basic principle, which is taking a little camera and this uh, lens and attaching it to the port cover here using the appropriate adapter. And it will allow you to basically do polar alignment to sub arc minute accuracy in a matter of minutes. We like the iPolar camera so much that Lost Mandy is now carrying the iPolar camera and the various adapters. You can check it out in our online catalog below. Um, we're gonna be using a um, 3D printed prototype of the G11 adapter. So yours is gonna look a little bit different than this and be a little bit more solid, but it's gonna work basically the same way. So the things you'll need to do polar alignment using the iPolar camera is number one, of course, the iPolar camera itself. And then you're gonna need uh, one of the adapters for the Lost Mandy mount. So we have, this is the G11 mount adapter that plugs right into the uh, cover of the deck port here. Uh, or if you're using a GM8 or GM811, you're gonna use a longer version, and this allows the camera to extend past the motor so that it doesn't interfere uh, with the iPolar operation. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna take the iPolar camera and attach kind of its generic adapter. And you wanna make sure that you're aligning the USB port in with this hole here. You can see there's a hole in the adapter. And then you'll just tighten this up and you're good to go. Next, we're going to remove the port cover on your scope. And again, using whatever uh, appropriate adapter you have, we're going to then screw that into place. And again, as I mentioned, this is a prototype, so yours is gonna look a little bit different. Let's screw that in. And then we are going to attach the iPolar camera into the port adapter. And again, you wanna make sure here that your USB cable is accessible. So when attaching the USB cable, I find that there's a particular snap that you need to make sure of happens. Uh, and I do feel a snap. Now I tried it a couple times before and was confused why the camera wasn't seen by the computer. And it turns out you just gotta push it in all the way and make sure there's that snap there. And then you attach the other end to your computer. Okay, so it's nighttime. We have a little bit of illumination just for the video here, but I can see uh, Polaris, and we're gonna go ahead and use the iPolar camera now that we have it set up to do the polar alignment. Basically what I have here is uh, my telescope setup. I have the computer on. The Gemini is also configured correctly with the settings for date, time, and location. And you'll see in a moment, we're gonna have that set up for the iPolar software. So let's go ahead and get started. As you mentioned, we left off. Uh, the camera is connected into the port cover. The USB cable is connected into the computer. We're gonna go ahead and launch the software. I have a remote uh, version on an iPad here. Don't get confused or anything. It's a nice way to connect and use the computer that's actually on the top of the telescope here. But this is really just a, a, a remote desktop into a Windows computer. So for all practical purposes, this is a Windows computer that we're demonstrating. And I have a screen recording going here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to connect and it's gonna go through initialization process. And then it's gonna show um, some stars. And great, we can actually see some of the stars here, which is fantastic. Uh, it does say there's an action needed and we need to uh, do a dark frame. So let's go ahead and press settings. And let's, uh, we're going to wait for this to say, take a dark frame. So my iPolar did not come with a cover. I don't know if that's typical or not. If yours came with a cover, great. Uh, if it's a black cover, just put it on now. But I'm gonna go ahead and use a piece of tin foil that I have. I'm just gonna go ahead and slide that on there. And now I'm going to press, take a dark frame. It says cover your camera, which I of course already have done. We're gonna say okay. And then it said it's taken. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that. We're gonna say okay. Now the next part is we wanna get the site location information from our mount. So again, the mount's already connected uh, and it's powered on and I've set the settings correctly. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, read the latitude and longitude from the mount. I'm gonna press that and I'm gonna say okay. And it said it was successful. And there is my latitude and there is my longitude. And it looks like actually it's also reading the temperature as well. I'm not sure where that came from, but 
Uh, so we are ready to go in terms of doing some polar alignment. So what's interesting here, <laughs> there's a, uh, looks like a plane or something that's going through. Is that a plane? Oh yeah, it is a plane. Um, so now what it says is it's plate solving. And this is the really nice thing about iPolar is that it uses plate solving technology so I don't have to do any sort of manual intervention in terms of figuring things out. Uh, it says 11 stars are detected. Um, the position of the virtual pole is shown as the maroon circle, so we can see that here. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna adjust uh, the altitude and azimuth of the mount itself, which is uh, kind of where it's pointing is this red uh, uh, cross. And I'm gonna try to do is get it over to this maroon circle. So we're gonna go ahead and start that process. Say, is this gonna work? Okay, here we go. I'm too, I'm too low. All right. So we're moving, moving, getting closer. Now, as I'm starting to get closer, let's see here, I wanna go this way. All right. it's going to, so as I get closer, it's gonna zoom in here and it's gonna show me in more detail kind of where I am. Now at this point, you wanna start tightening down the azimuth and the altitude knobs or bolts if you have them. And you wanna do this iteratively. So as we tighten this a little bit more, you're gonna see maybe it comes off a little bit in terms of the accuracy, but we're gonna continue moving until uh, I'm gonna get that pretty close I hope well yep there we go so it's gonna move around a little bit I'm sure but I'm feeling pretty good that that's uh, about where I need it to be. So we are done polar aligning with the iPolar camera. At this point, I can just quit out of the software. There's no fancy disconnect needed. And I'm going to remove the USB cable from the camera and the computer. If you wanna leave the iPolar camera attached to the uh, port, you can do that. I would just cover the camera. Uh, otherwise, you can remove it and put the port cover back on that came with your Lost Mandy mount, and we are ready to go image.